Welcome friends to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy, my husband is Paul, and we are so happy you are here today. Today's video, we're gonna give you ways to take a house and turn it into a frugal home. There is a definition difference between the word house and the word home. The word house basically is a structure designed for human habitation. A home is a place of residence where one lives permanently. So I think this is pretty significant as we're taking a house and actually turning it into a frugal home. We're gonna be taking you around our home and we're gonna show you ways that we live frugally on a daily basis. So let's get right to it. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna get into the kitchen and we're going to look at some items that usually people throw out, that the landfills are just overflowing with. But we're going to show you how to take these items and repurpose them and reuse them. So let's turn the camera around and get into the kitchen. Our first tip is to reuse the packaging that your everyday foods come in. Perfect example, someone brought cupcakes to our home. After those four cupcakes were done, we kept the cupcake container. If I give cupcakes to Paul's parents or maybe muffins, whatever it might be, this is a great way to transport them. Nothing gets smushed, the icing stays wonderful. It was absolutely free and I'm keeping it out of the landfill. The same for these old margarine containers. I've had these for years they hold exactly one liquid cup. So when I make my chicken stock, I put it in these and I put it in containers like this. This was an ice cream container. So I know it was great for the freezer because that's where it came out of. Again, we put our broth and soups in here and put them right in the freezer. Glass jars that jelly, jam, pickles, anything comes in. Just wash out and clean these jars good when the food is done and you're all set. They are amazing for food storage in the refrigerator. I don't recommend putting glass in the freezer unless you are 100% sure it is freezer safe. They are also great storage container for shelf-stable food like pasta and beans. Now, a lot of people have told me they use the plastic bags that cereal and cookies and crackers come in for so many uses. The only thing I'm gonna caution you with is some cereal packages I have noticed. If you look at the ingredients, now this doesn't have it, but it will say BHT added to the packaging material. Just be aware of that. BHT is a preservative that they use in a lot of packaging materials. Another frugal tip that you can do with these boxes is use them as shipping containers. Just cover them with brown paper or inside out wrapping paper so the white side is on the outside. You're shipping something that is not fragile. You're not going to put something fragile in here. This is a great box to use as a little mailing container. The plastic bags that things like rice cakes come in or bread comes in. Those are great reusable plastic bags. When you look at all these products here, every single one of these would be in the landfill. Not only does this help the environment tremendously, but it helps us financially. We are able to reuse what other people look at as garbage. Such a big part of frugality is using up what we have and repurposing items, being aware of the environment and how much we're throwing away that can actually be used for something else, have a whole nother aspect to it that we can utilize. Now we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna show you some of the rooms up there and how we have repurposed items to decorate. And we hope this encourages you to look around at what you already may have in your home and how you can repurpose it to bring that frugal yet beautiful 
element of home decor to life using items you presently own. So we're going to head upstairs. Why don't you come along with us? Another fun way we keep our home frugal is by repurposing items into decor. These are some of the actual shower gift cards my mom received at her wedding shower years and years and years ago. And what I did was I found three little frames at Goodwill and I took what I thought were the most precious cards. I have them all, but I took these three and I framed them and I just sit them on my dresser. Not only is it a gentle reminder of my mom every day, but I think they're absolutely charming and beautiful. So always look at items and think, how can I use them? Especially personal, sentimental items like these little shower gift cards. And all I had to pay for at Goodwill was the cost of the frames. As you can see, basic heirloom items Things that you look at and you find appealing can be turned into beautiful pictures for the wall, decorations for the dresser, however you choose to be creative. The whole point is you are saving money. You are not going into a store and dropping upwards of $50 for a picture that you hang on your wall. You can do it, DIY it yourself. They come out so beautiful. Just be creative, think outside the box. Now the next money saving frugal tip we're gonna share with you on how to make your house a frugal home is we're going to now go into our bedroom closet. We're showing you everything. You know we keep it real on this channel. But what we wanna do is just let you see how we keep our closet and why we keep it the way we do. So now let's go upstairs again and get into our bedroom closet. It's so important to keep a well-organized clothes and shoe closet. What happens if we don't, we forget what we have and we overbuy? What I do seasonally is I'll come in and go through my clothes and see what fits, what doesn't, and then off to Goodwill or a thrift store they'll go. I know that we always think we're gonna lose that extra 10 or 15 pounds and we're gonna get into our clothes. If you haven't worn something in a year, pass it on to somebody who could use it. I know I get a lot of questions where I get my tops. I would say 90% are Goodwill or thrift stores. They're all good quality and they are inexpensive. <laughs> Paul and I each have one dresser as well, but like his summer shorts, he'll fold and put right here. Just keeps them out of the major dresser drawers that he uses. We know exactly what we have. And again, it's so much easier to pick a top or a pair of slacks when you know everything fits, you know everything in here is clean, pressed, hanging, and ready to be worn. With that closet encouragement, I want to stress the point of having garments ready to wear. I can't tell you the frustration I used to feel where before I would lose a button off a shirt and put it in the closet that way. And I would go to retrieve that shirt to wear another time and the buttons off of it. Instead of dealing with the button as soon as it came off the shirt or setting it aside to sew the button on later and then wash it and put it away, I stuck it back in. Well, those days are gone. We don't do that anymore. Anything in our closet now, we can grab and wear. It fits. It looks appropriate, it's mended, it's pressed if it needs to be. So there is no looking in the closet going, oh, I can't wear that today or I can't wear this, this doesn't even fit. Make your life easier. You'll save a ton of money on clothing by looking at your closet, seeing everything neat, organized, and ready to go. Now we're going to show you a different type of inventory. We're gonna go upstairs to our restroom and we're just gonna show you what we do to make sure that we have what we need at all times and not have to pay full price for items that we know we need and use on a regular basis. Let's head on upstairs again. We're up in the bathroom now. 
This is our little step stool that we found on Bulk Pickup. Had some paint splatters, but it works great. We have to remember to inventory our health and beauty aids. What you want to do is make sure when items are on sale, you buy them, put them away. Toothpaste expiration dates are long. This is March of 24. So when these go on sale for under a dollar and sometimes even cheaper, we get them and we put them away and I keep track of what we have. And you can do this for every aspect of your health and beauty aids. When my makeup that I use goes on sale at CVS and they're giving extra care bucks and I know that I only have one left, I'll keep an eye out and I'll pick one up and just put it away. Don't wait until you're out of a product. When these items are on sale, just like we do with our food pantry and our freezer storage, you're going to want to stock up when these items are on sale. It's just a practical tip to keep your health and beauty aids organized and to know the quantity you have of each. Nothing is worse than running out of a product you know you use all the time and having to run to the store to pay full price for it. There's no need if we keep on top of our health and beauty care inventory list. What we want to encourage you with now is making some room for fun. Just a small area where you can sit down, relax, and enjoy yourself. We're gonna turn the camera around again and we're gonna show you what we mean. A lot of times we get bored in our own homes and we look for entertainment outside the home. See if you can create just a small space where you can do puzzles, play games, read, journal, whatever it is you enjoy doing. We set up this table in our music room and we just basically use it for fun. I got this at a church rummage sale. There are four individual Disney Thomas Kincaid puzzles. New, it looks like it was $20 and we paid three for the box and each one was still individually wrapped. So this is just a great way to create a cozy little spot. We have a radio on the table if we want to listen to a little bit of music. Just a place to go to be able to spread out and do what you love to do best because that will save you money because you are staying home and enjoying the pastimes that are your hobbies. That little area where we keep the table and chairs is not huge. It's in our music room upstairs. And I encourage you, if you have a card table, maybe you could set it up in a corner of a room if you have some extra space. It's such a great little section to paint or write letters to your friends or crochet, knit, whatever it might be. That extra space will really be utilized. The next frugal tip we're going to give you is how important it is to repair what you own. And this kind of goes hand in hand what I was saying about the buttons coming off our clothing and what we do with it. We're gonna turn the camera around again and see exactly what I mean. An old fashioned sewing kit. Definitely every frugal home needs one. I picked this up at a tag sale for a dollar or two years ago. I love it. Look at this, oh my goodness basic sewing kit. I am not a seamstress uh, at all, but I do know how to mend. And I think it is so important just to have a basic sewing kit, pins, lots of different color threads. This threads my needles. As I'm getting older, it gets harder. A basic sewing kit can put a button on. It could mend a heel of a sock. It does so much. And don't negate the simplicity of it because it can save so much money when you repair what you already own with a simple needle and thread. If you remember, I'm sure someone in your past used to use butter cookie tins for those sewing boxes. I know my mom and my grandmother both did. 
So just make yourself a little tiny sewing kit if you don't have one already. Just a couple of basic colored threads, some needles, a little pair of scissors, maybe some buttons and pins, but something that you can go to if one of your buttons falls off or you get a hole in an article of clothing that you can mend easily. I am no seamstress by any means, but I do have the basic skills at least to put a button on and that will save you so much money. Now our last tip we're going to get into the kitchen and we're going to show you how being neat and organized can really help with meal time because a cluttered table can really give the feel of chaos. So we're gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you first off what not to do. So let's get back into the kitchen one more time. Another simple habit that will save you money is keeping a clean, organized kitchen table. What I am showing you is what not to do. Keeping it real. I was working today, I got up from the table, everything was left as it is. And as you can see, this is not a warm, inviting table at all for dinner time now. When you come into your kitchen and you see your table like this, and again, I'm keeping it real, you know, you don't wanna cook, you don't wanna eat at this table, now I gotta clear the whole thing off. Keep your kitchen table clear and clutter free. Once I put everything away, cleared off the table, put a fresh new tablecloth on, I felt ready to prepare food for my family. I keep our place setting simple. Why is this important? How does this save money? It makes you want to eat at home. And we're more apt to save money by eating at home instead of going out or running through the drive-thru. This looks inviting, it looks cozy, and the food will tend to be more delicious when the table is set and everything is cleared off. So we hope these money-saving tips on how to turn your house into a frugal home were helpful. We use them day in, day out, and we have so many more we can share with you. But we thought this was just a great jumping off point. Maybe some of them were just gentle reminders, but either case, we hope you enjoyed them. Now we're gonna get into my office, and we're going to turn the camera around, and we are going to pick our 45,000 subscriber winner. They are going to win this two-piece Happy Planner gift pack, and we are so thankful and so appreciative of how many of you left comments. So let's get into my home office and pick a winner. It is exactly 9.02 a.m. Eastern Time, March 14th, and we are ready to pick our winner. So I'm going to put the URL right here of the video and then we're gonna include the replies to the comments. We're gonna filter duplicate users, and we're gonna filter the comments based on a specific text, which is the word joy. Add the sum, which is six plus seven is 13, so they know we are legit, and we're gonna get our comments. Okay, are you ready? We're gonna start our raffle and pick our winner. Boomar, yay, Boomar! Congratulations! Congratulations! All righty. Thank you for being a part of our giveaway, everyone. So congratulations to our winner. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Please email us your mailing address to frugalmoneysaver at gmail.com and we'll get these two gifts right out to you. Thank you everyone who entered and we hope to be at 50,000 subscribers in no time and that's gonna be an extra special giveaway for sure. Today's question of the day is, how do you make your house a frugal home? Give me some examples, simple, easy ways that you know that your house has become a frugal home. 
I know it will encourage us and I know it will encourage our viewers. We want to thank you all for taking this time to be with us. I want to say especially a huge thank you to all of you that responded to my community post and my Instagram post about how sick I was the last couple days. Yikes, I was down. And I apologize to you for not getting to your comments, but I physically couldn't. Not that I didn't want to, but I want to thank you all for the love you shared, the get well wishes, prayers, just the virtual hugs I felt all over the place. So thank you so much. You all mean the world to us. You really do. You have no idea. We thank you again for sharing this time with us. We ask please that you give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. We appreciate you all so much. We ask you to be well. We ask you to be safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God greatly bless you.